Thames Water is warning that bills could skyrocket by more than 40%. This is the biggest water company in Britain, which is an extra £627 a year. Yeah, and you've just won the water cube, Tom. Yeah. OK, it's... <laughs> OK. Liam Halligan, he's the, he's the expert. I reckon it's a big say. Thames Water are a shocker. So Thames Water are a privatised utility. They were privatised in 1989. And believe it or not, Thames Water provide water for 27% of Amazing, UK households, mainly in the South East, as the name yeah. suggests. What's going on? What's going on is that Thames Water, which is partly owned by the UAE government, by the Chinese government, okay. by Canadian pension funds, by the UK universities pension fund, <laughs> Obviously, there's been lots and lots of controversy over sewage and the Victorian infrastructure and a lack of repairs and all the rest of it. And that's very, very controversial. So what Thames Water have done is they've proposed to Ofwat, which is the regulator, that they're going to invest £18.7 billion over the next five years, between 2025 and 2030. But they say, if you want all this investment from us to plug all these holes and stop all this beach pollution, we're going to have to put bills up by 40 per cent over and above inflation over the next five years. Now, of course, off what who are meant to be there to protect consumers, mostly uh, they've rejected that proposal from Thames Water and a final off what decision is expected on the 23rd of May. So look what's going on here. As we come up to an election, you've got. Uh, Thames Water, which is obviously private sector owned, over many, many years, many, many shareholders have taken out hundreds of millions, billions of mm. pounds in dividends. Which should have gone into repairing mm. the yes. Victorian... Which may or may not have, you know, depending on the contract, I haven't seen the, con the, the, yeah. the precise fine print of the contract, almost no one ever does. On the other hand, we're now in a situation where Thames Water are so massively indebted because they've been taking on more uh, debt and interest rates have gone up and that debt is harder to service. <laughs> they're now, just let me finish the point, Carol, they're now on the brink of collapse. And if they collapse, who's going to get the blame? The government. Yeah. So it's like a Mexican standoff. But they're making it sound like doing the repairs, they're doing us a favour. That's, that's part of what we pay in our water bills, for them to, to upgrade them. They should have been doing it over the years and haven't been. We do have a creaking Victorian water infrastructure and it needs lots and lots of repairs. But a privatised industry doesn't want to do the repairs, it just wants to take out the dividends. And that's the basic problem of the model. But as we approach an election, the government gets more and more nervous... The private sector companies, they will deny this. Yeah. They will chance their arm and try and spook the government into giving more money. Otherwise, the government's going to have a water nationalisation crisis. And, of course, nationalisation will cross of tens of billions of pounds. And, and you know, people watching this programme or listening to this programme will all be able to tell you, I can tell you where there's a pipe which leaks yeah. every third right. or fourth week That's and, it, right. and it never gets fixed properly or they put a sticking plaster on it and it leaks and again. There's, there's absolutely no excuse for pumping war sewage into our, into our water. And at the moment, the way the, the way the industry is structured, unfortunately, it strikes me as an outsider looking on and trying to understand what's happening. It strikes me there's no real incentives for anyone in the system as it currently is to sort this out. And no consequences. Uh, and no consequences, except the consequence that the government could have a massive political problem on its hands unless it stumps up cash, i.e. our cash. So either we're going to pay through more bills or we're going to pay through some taxpayer rescue fund. Mm -hmm. On no account does this seem to be providing value for money no. for households or businesses that have sky-high water bills that are set to get higher. And it, you know, for me, this is the kind of thing that gives privatisation a bad name. I wouldn't put my little toe in the River Thames, frankly. No. Nope. It might fall off. <laughs> it's so horrible and disgusting. Well, it's true, isn't it? Well, would, it is you, true. would you give something it, in the Thames? No, and, and, and Thames Water is my authority as well. Mine too? It's not great. The, the Thames, I mean, I've, I've spent a lot of time rowing on the Thames, believe it or not. So the Thames is actually quite a clean river for a major city. It's much cleaner than it used to be, but it has deteriorated a bit mm. in the last few years. At, you know, during this standoff between Thames Water, Off What, 
and yeah, the government. Labour used to have a policy to take the water companies back into public ownership, which would probably be quite popular. Well, it, but I, you've dropped it, Keir Starmer. Yes. With all it would be popular, but it'd also be very, very Ruinous expensive, expensive because you've got the £250 million pound pension fund deficit, yeah. they just you've got, it, you've got they loads and loads of debt, the money that's been paid out in dividends to bankers who have long since yeah, disappeared yeah. into their, their beach houses, that's gone. So this is, this, it's no wonder for me, somebody who you know, generally likes free markets, mm. likes to take a pro-business approach, for me, Thames Waters all deny this, that's their right, but it strikes me, having watched this over many, many years, that this looks like privatisation gone wrong. And the Canadian pension companies do not care about the water that you put in your kettle. Yes. Caramel, eh? Well, well I don't care,